सो आई एम टोल्ड दैट डिशेज लाइक द मिसल द मसाला खारा एंड द ब्रेड टोस्ट आर डिशेज दर बीन अराउंड एवर सिंस द प्लेस ओपन इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी एट एंड आई थिंक दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज दीज आर नॉट द सॉर्ट ऑफ डिशेज दर आर ओवर इंजीनियर दे नॉट ट्राई टू डू टू मच विद इट दे नॉट रिली ट्राई टू क्रिएट द कलरी इक्वल एंड ऑफ सेंडिंग अ मैन टू द मून वॉट आर ट्राई टू डू इज प्लीज योर पैलेट इन अ वेरी सिंपल फैशन I love the nuttiness that the peanuts convey to, and the tinge of heat from the green chili segments. Oh, that's a dal that's very very gentle. Mm. But then you bite into some coconut that rewards you with its fleshy sweet crunch. Mm. A delicious ride. of flavors and textures namaskara ek hai tere mate shantaram shetty dayan shetty i am good morning they come in the morning and you are i am a sunny lord ah nice i think i met your wife the last time right. what's your name my name is abhijit abhijit ये हा मिस नहीं देव तो सायंका मिस मसाला करा ब्रेड टोस्ट ब्रेड टोस्ट दिस इज अ प्लेस दट्स बीन अराउंड सिंस 1958 वी आर एट गुरुदत्ता भवन इन हुबली वी विजिटेड योर अर्लियर बट वी विजिटेड इन द मॉर्निंग एंड वी सेवर्ड सम डिलिशियस ब्रेकफास्ट आई क्लियरली रिमेम्बर दैट पूरी विद द भाजी विच वॉज क्वाइट स्पेशल एंड ऑल्सो दैट पलाव वी डिड अ पलाव into which went some fried bread pieces and what was interesting was that the owner told us that the bread pieces mimic the texture of mutton and that's the reason why people like it namaskar aaye tera namaskar sir last time you service got to do last time so when got the right what to sir sir suru misal i think we got to make a beginning with that misal this is a misal that is held together quite gutty there's some shavings of fresh coconut as garnish there's some coriander there is some farsan of course onions now there is no pav that it's served with this bowl of misal is rather self contained i can spot some matki in that some moth bean mm. so traditionally the maharashtrian misal is the madki which is the usal and then you have the gravy which is the rasa and then you have the cut which is that flavored oil that floats to the top you got the matki but it's all come together as a rather thick assemblage there's some curry leaf in there somewhere plenty of onions some tomatoes mm. and there's barely any rasa some lemon what you want to do is mix it all together बेस एंड उपीट हाँ सो मड़के का मेले मड़के मिसाल करी मसाला खार सो अदर ग्रेवी बर ट्राई स्वीट सालो टमा बेस बिफोर द टॉपिट विद मॉथ बीन एंड दी अदर थिंग्स इंक्लूडिंग दैट मिक्सचर इज वेल रसा I think that certainly helps moisten things up a bit. So this masal is a delightful medley of flavors and textures. I think you should definitely ask for that rasa because otherwise it could be a bit dry on the palate. Mm. And that rasa, especially with that cut, with that spicy oil floating on the top, does perk things for this masal. Masala khara. Hmm. I think there's also some peanuts in there. Mm. If you were to park your expectations of a regular misal aside, this makes for an enjoyable dish. You know, I remember eating it the first time, and I was like, "This is not a misal because it doesn't have that rasa separate. It doesn't have that cut. It doesn't have the pow." But then you realize that whatever you need is all in there already. So, for instance, when it comes to the starch, which is the pow. 
That's not there, but it's already in there in the form of the semolina, in the form of the spiced rava which is there. And then the other components are there. So the matki is there, but perhaps not so much in its quantity. The rasa is there, but you need to probably call for it separately. And then of course, the other elements that contribute to the crunch and texture, whether it's the save, whether it's the onions or the tomato, you just need to park aside the concept of a traditional Maharashtra style misal and you will quite enjoy what this bowl has to convey to you. Mm. Also the flavour of the curry leaf is quite pronounced. I think the other interesting thing is that dishes evolve. So the family that runs Guru Dutta Bhavan originally come from Mangalore. We are in North Karnataka which is very close to Maharashtra. So cuisines tend to cross borders. Cuisines evolve and they morph into something based on the various influences that come together. And usually in most cases, the whole is always a greater delicious sum than of all the individual parts. I think that rasa really helped. Masala kara. So this is basically some mixture, plenty of onions, tomatoes, some farsan, bits of muruku too. Mm, there's some sweetness and also some huli. This is quite enjoyable. What is the sour thing in this? Limbu. 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 This is very enjoyable. Huh? Chuda is there, mixture is there. Mixture, chuda, shave. Shave, coconut is there, niruli is there. Lemon. Lemon, mate, sakre. Very nice. So, this masala kara is almost like the concept of a Bombay Belpuri. But what they do is they take some chuda, they take some mixture, some onions, some tomatoes, and then they have a liquid that's basically lime and sugar. And then they toss it up rather quickly in that. On the vessel, band le liyaki, toss mar dera. Ah, it is super I love the flavors. Very simple, slight sweetness, slight sourness, and then the crunch that comes from the individual components, be it the farzan or the mixture or the chuda. And also there are slivers of green chili that you will encounter every once in a while to provide a prick of heat. What's also nice is that some of that chuda, the spice beaten rice has soaked up the lime and sugar and has become quite soggy. So that juxtaposes rather sharply and nicely against the crisp farsan or the save that you will crunch into. These are simple flavors, simple dishes but done consistently well over a period of time. And I think what happens is these are sort of dishes that become addictive. These are sort of dishes that you form memories of. So even 20 years down the line, you will remember this masala khara and say, I want to go back and taste it. And perhaps at that point, also bring your children along to savor that. And I think things like that help explain the longevity of places like Guru Dutta Bhavan. There's plenty of onions that I'm now biting into. Namaskara. Sure. Good luck. Happy eating, do well in life. Thanks. See you guys. See you. Mm, generous chunks of onion in that bite. This dish, this is the first time. This is the first time. 60 years in the bread toast. Bread toast. So I'm told that dishes like the misal, the masala khara, and the bread toast are dishes that have been around ever since the place opened in 1958. And I think that's very interesting because these are not the sort of dishes that are over-engineered. They're not trying to do too much with it. They're not really trying to create the culinary equivalent of sending a man to the moon. What they're trying to do is please your palate in a very simple fashion. And what are the kind of flavors that we register? We register sweetness, we register sourness, we register a bit of salt, we register a bit of umami. And those are the sort of flavors that they are seeking to convey to your palate. And I think when you taste these sort of dishes, over a period of time, they become habit forming, they become addictive. And then, even 15 years down the line, 20 years down the line, you want to revisit some of these memories. And I think that's what brings you back to Guru Dutta Bhavan. And I think that's how legendary establishments are built over decades. 
They do simple things, but they do those simple things consistently well. Enough talking, let's get back to that masala khara. Mm. One evening dish if you want to taste, definitely taste the masala khara. Mm. I love the nuttiness that the peanuts convey to. And the tinge of heat from the green chilli segments. Mmm, I can also taste some Oma now, some Ajwain that's probably gone into one of that Dappa Kara. Mmm, a delicious riot of flavours and textures. So this is the bread toast, some thick bread that has been slathered with some ghee and there's some masala puri that goes on top of it. And along with that you get an onion palya and also some chutney. I am told you have got to have this with the onions and the chutney but I want to taste it first just by itself. Mm. I can taste that tuppa in that bread. There is also a hint of sweetness in that bread. I suppose this is a milk bread and as they toast it perhaps that tiny tinge of sweetness gets amplified a bit. So you are tasting a bit of that sweetness on your palate and that juxtaposes nicely against the warming spices. And that tuppa, I suppose, helps bring it together. Mmm. Oh, there's a bit of sourness from some limbe annu, I think. And then the onions have been braised. So the onions also bring their natural sweetness to that party, to that party of flavours. And then there is some saswe, I think some ogarne of mustard seeds, some lentils that go on to it. Mmm. Picturized savouring from masal dosa, minus the dosa, but with loads of that palya, that onion fortified palya. But then that bread brings with it a tinge of sweetness. I must say some of them are dishes that you probably need to train your palate to get accustomed to. Top that, that triangle of bread with some palya and some chutney. And let's see what this has to convey. Mm, there's a bit of a salty hit in that chutney which when juxtaposed against the savoury sweetness of the onions tends to get a little amplified. What I'm enjoying most is the flavour of that palya. Mm, very simple seasoning of the mustard seeds. The onions have been braised nicely to the extent that they're sharing some of their inherent sweetness with you. Mm, there's some pepper too that I'm tasting in that. So I think something like the bread toast with the palya and the chutney is a bit of an acquired taste. When you taste it for the first time, either you love it or perhaps you will wonder what this assemblage is all about. But the people of Hubli who have grown up tasting this over the last 66 years, for them, well, this is what they call comfort food. For me, the winner amongst these three is clearly that masala khara. Mm. Thank you. Bonda soup. Adu, misal lotti ke rasa kotra la. Mamuli kotte ra adu. Yes sir, yes sir. 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 Start, try it. That missile definitely needed the companionship of that rasa. Without that, it felt a little wanting. But not so much this bonda soup. You've got a uddina vade that is doing its best to soak up all the lentils, that dali tove. And I'm going to help it do that too. That's a dal that's very very gentle, barely whispers to your palate and that too, only its creamy lentil goodness. Solpa belluli there, some garlic in that, some tomato and some saswe, some mustard seeds. I think there are slivers of green chilli in that, perhaps some pepper. Mm. Extremely delicate in the flavours that it registers. The masala khara was a sort that brought an entire orchestra of flavours to your palate. Well, this dish barely registers a whisper. Mm. But then, you bite into some coconut that rewards you with its fleshy sweet crunch. So the other interesting thing here is that they do certain dishes on certain days of the week. So I am told this 
Bonda soup is done only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you also do that uh, Sabudana Sabudana Vada. When is that? That's on a Friday. That's on a Friday. We also have a Pau Patis, which is a specialty on a Friday. Pau Patis? Pau Patis. One now, any waterless appreciation, one of the vegetable parts. Ah. So I think out here the Shetis have innovated a fair bit over the years. So they've taken influences from different parts, whether it's the misal or the Dabeli or that Vada Pau, and they've tweaked it to make their own signature style. So the names remind you of what you would have tasted elsewhere, but then when you meet it, it's a different personality altogether. So I think what you need to do when you dine here, especially with some of these dishes that have been reinterpreted over the years is keep your minds open and I think that applies to every new dish that you will taste. Keep your minds open, evaluate the dish for what it is about and perhaps you will appreciate, savor and enjoy it. Dishes like the Bonda soup are the sort of gently flavored backdrops that allow you to appreciate the singular flavors of some of the simple ingredients when it hits your palate. Be it that aromatic cumin or that sweet fleshy crunch of the coconut or that sliver of green chilli that you bite into once in a while or the nuttiness of the mustard seeds. So you've been coming here for how many years? 35. So your father brought you here first? So I think that's the thing with places like these. Mr. Jagdish here, his father used to come and now he comes here. He's been coming here for the last 30 years. All for those very simple dishes. The misal, the masala khara, the bread toast or perhaps the bonda soup. Some coffee to end our uh, short publi outing. You know, I don't really have the sort of memories that many people like Mr. Jagdish would have of this place. I visited this place once to do a shoot and a couple of times after that we were passing by in the evening we thought it would be nice to have a coffee and taste one or two of the dishes that we tasted. But even as I was driving to Goa and I said let's stop for coffee somewhere, I didn't mind taking a bit of a detour into Ubli town to revisit Gurudatta Bhavan and also of course present some of those dishes to you. And that's the sort of hold that institutions like these have over their patrons for decades on end. So if you want to savor something interesting, something snacky, vegetarian and delicious, definitely find your way to Gurudatta Bhavan. I'm going to place a link to the previous breakfast episode in the description below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating and drinking. Ah. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!